Welcome back, at least hopefully. Today we are going to continue our ECU tuning journey. So last time we looked at the basic settings and engine constants. And today I'm going to explain to you the trigger settings mainly. And uh, this is especially important for getting the ignition right and for getting the engine running correctly. As I've said in the other videos before, if you have any questions or if you want to let me tune your car or have any questions about your build, uh, either write them down in the comments below or if the questions are more complicated, um, just send me a message on Instagram and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. Also, if you have not seen the first two parts and are just coming into this with part three, uh, maybe go ahead and watch parts one and two to get up to speed on where we're at now. Next thing will be the trigger setup. Trigger setup is important for getting the car running as this is for the engine speed or rather for the RPM detection. In some cases there is predetermined trigger setups, for example for the NA Miata for G63 or something. If you're using the NA Miata, for example, then you are using uh, this preset. This is using the CAS at the back of the Miata engine, for example, while the 99205 Miata is using a crank signal at the front of the crank and in addition to that, a camshaft sensor at the front of the engine on the 992-2000 NB and on the VVT engines, uh, it's a uh, cam sensor much further back and then there is already everything set for it. If you are using for example a 36 tooth um, and missing tooth trigger wheel, you can select missing tooth. This is also a very popular option and um, most of the time this is going to be a 36-2 trigger wheel or I have also seen 12 teeth or 60-2 on VW vehicles for example then you put in your base teeth so the teeth that is the that the trigger wheel is supposed to have and below that you are going to put in the missing teeth in theory most of the time it's going to be 36 and 1 missing teeth I have a 36 and 2 missing tooth so these are the basic settings for the trigger setup one thing that is also important or Probably one of the most important things is the trigger angle. So this is if you turn the engine to top dead center and uh, you look at the trigger wheel. This is when the first tooth after the missing tooth passes the sensor and that is basically the degrees the crank is rotating. For example, on a stock Miata, this is about 15 degrees or 14 degrees. You're gonna have to use a timing light to get the exact measurement. Um, but if the crank is turning 30 degrees and then tooth one, so the tooth after the missing tooth passes the sensor, then this value is 30 degrees. And this determines your engine timing. So if you get this wrong, this can mean very, very bad consequences and uh, can lead to engine failure. Maybe not at idle, but under load, if it is not timed correctly, then this can lead to big, big problems. So be careful here and use a timing light and use it properly. Skip revolution cycles. If you have trouble starting at zero, then it is recommended to put in one so that the engine turns over for one cycle until the trigger activates and um, is counting teeth. Um, this may lead to a better startup or a less of a hesitant startup. You'll have to experiment around with that. The trigger edge and secondary trigger edge is always depending on the sensor setup. So if you are using, for example, a VR sensor, you are using rising or which is the case for the stock Miata sensor. On a hall sensor it could be falling, but in theory normally it should be rising. And the secondary trigger setup, depending on, uh, again, what sensor is rising, on a 36-2 trigger wheel on the Miata, Flying Miata recommends though falling. 
you'd also if that does not work out have to change it out uh, change it around a bit or it could be also specified by your sensor type the missing tooth secondary trigger type is only needed when you are running a sequential ignition setup so um, this is basically if you are running a missing tooth trigger then you need this if you are running sequential ignition because the ECU needs to know at what position the camshaft is and most of the time it's a single tooth cam on the Miata and the Miata it is also a single tooth cam and that is the thing that needs to be known for the ECU to get a correct sequential ignition signal. On some ECUs the ECU does not have to know this value, it can do it without, but on the Speeduino and Mega Squirts unit it only works with the cam sensor. For example, on a Miata engine with the stock set uh, trigger setup, this is grayed out because you always have to have a single tooth uh, cam sensor and you can also check the box for resync every cycle, so sync the crankshaft to the camshaft every rotation or every 720 degrees crank rotation and every 360 degree cam rotation you can set that to yes this will improve accuracy although this can introduce some noise so if you may have problems with high rpm um, misfiring or rpm readouts you may be able to put that to no and uh, if it gets better you'll just have to test that out the same goes for trigger filter this is if you have a again a misfire or a noisy rpm signal you'll see that when the rpm is fluctuating around or something and uh, even when you are holding a steady rpm it is fluctuating then you can set different um, strengths of a trigger signal i wouldn't go over medium though because it can happen that if the signal gets too noisy just get a cut off rpm signal above some above some rpm number such as 5000 maybe that can happen actually for startup purposes which we are going to look at mainly right now you also have to look at spark settings and check if your parameters are set correctly in this case on the stock miata engine or stock miata setup we are going using some uh, wasted spark that means uh, that two coils are firing at the same time uh, and the other option would be sequential so that every coil fires when it needs to be due to the stock ecu or stock wiring only having two channels for spark plug or ignition coil wiring we would set this to wasted spark obviously there would also be for a distributor there would be a single channel or wasted cop for um, coil on plug setup such as with Yaris coils, Nissan coils or VW coils. Cranking advance angle would be the ignition angle that the engine uses while cranking. I would recommend somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees depends on how well the engine is cranking, how well it's starting. You'll have to experiment around with that. Uh, spark output triggers is something that is most of the time set to going low and not going high. Um, this also depends on your setup and also depends on the engine. Below that you have enable fixed lock timing. This is good for um, changing the trigger angle and determining the correct base ignition timing. You can put this to on and then set a fixed angle at which the engine is going to fire. So you can set up the trigger angle correctly. If you put in 10 here, the, li uh, the trigger lines on the Miata crank pulley will line up uh, with the 10 degree mark, obviously. So this is ideal if you want to use a timing light for adjusting the trigger angle but do not forget to turn this off again otherwise your performance will be very bad per tooth ignition events this is something that is not really necessarily a thing to have you have to activate but it is recommended on uh, systems that have relatively few trigger spots like for example on a miata you only have five spots you have four pins on the 
um, crankshaft and you have one pin on the camshaft. So resyncing every time one tooth passes will gain in accuracy and may lead to better power and less knock. So this may be an option to enable, but on a 36-2 or 36-1 or 60-2 trigger wheel, this is not a must have. Dual error correction, I have not tried around with this, therefore it is not really something I have experiencing uh, an experience with. I would just leave this off since this is a closed loop tool to um, determine if the ignition coils are misfiring or something. So I just leave this off and go off of the stuff you know. The last thing we'll need is dwell settings and this is dependent on your engine or your coil setup because uh, dependent if you have stock coils for example on a Miata or for example running COP conversion so you are having to run a different dwell setting um, depending on how your ignition is set up because for example the Volkswagen cores use a lower dwell so this is basically the time it takes them to charge up and if the time gets too long this can lead to an overheating uh, coil and uh, may lead to damage and this is also the reason why you cannot really run the coil on plug system on a stock issue it may work for some time but you may damage the coils in the process uh, so this is not recommended but if you have a programmable ECU, you can always obviously change the coil, uh, the dwell. Um, you, what dwell to use is always listed in the either description of your specific coils or it has been posted online because everything is basically different. Overdwell protection also makes sense. You can put in the value a value above the cranking dwell. So. I would go for about 50% over the cranking dwell, maybe a bit more if you encounter issues, but that just helps um, the coil packs not overheat and not melting basically. And that's basically it for the base settings for your base map. Yes, this was a long video, but um, I hope you could understand everything. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. I will answer any of this. As I said, you can write me on Instagram if you are, as I said, not wanting to do this yourself. I'm also always open for uh, tuning and uh, willing to help you out with anything you need. Yeah, that's basically it. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.